I'm Steve Dale with the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine. I'll tell you, diabetes, Dr. Sandy Wright, an internal medicine specialist, seems to be on the rise in cats. Are we hearing about it more or is it being diagnosed more? Maybe both. Yeah, I think people are becoming more astute at picking up the early signs. Um, obesity is a little bit of a factor, as it is in man, in producing some insulin resistance. And then, you know, our dogs and cats, thanks to owners and veterinarians, are living longer. And it's a uh, disease of older dogs and cats that we're seeing. All right, let's talk about cats a little bit. And you said people are picking up on those signs. What are some of the symptoms? There are signs common to a lot of other different things. And people with cats know to be their own best pet detective and really keep an eye on their cats. So it'll be something as simple as eating a little bit more, which is kind of tough because cats are kind of all about cupboard love and what's a cat <laughs> eating too much? They eat a lot. But even if they eat even more, or they start docking over things to get into food. They're drinking more and they're urinating more and at the same time they're losing weight. So that could be signs of kidney disease, some intestinal disease maybe, but it's all because there's an insulin uh, deficiency. The body can't use glucose and so the glucose from diet gets just wasted in the urine. So the glucose in the urine brings in water. They're eating more to make up for that but they're just losing weight because they can't usually use that fuel because there's no insulin. Diabetes has to be one of those things where you say to the client, your cat has diabetes and the jaw must drop. In part because then you have a conversation about insulin often and people get, I mean, who's not afraid of needles? And that's a part of the treatment here. So how do you deal with that? You know, part of going around fears is to explaining to people so they're very clear and understand and then having them practice. Because I totally agree, I've had owners not want to do insulin and dogs require insulin. Cats, if we start them on insulin, this is the exciting news, and we start them on some diet changes, we have a fairly high proportion of those cats that can go off insulin long term in say maybe the first few months that they won't need insulin long term. And that, the, the key is the diet. We've changed diets a little bit on those guys. But what I've done, it's a very small needle. So we can start with something like even injecting a banana to see what the whole aspect of that like is like and then try injecting the kitty cat. Because the key on all the stuff we do as specialists, but particularly diabetes, is these guys live excellent quality of lives. They do really, really well. And it's not so a common in Not a death sentence. No, mm -hmm. not a death okay. sentence, absolutely. All right, now, now uh, I want to go back to the... Killing a cat, giving an injection. The surprise is that it probably is easier to give a shot to a cat. Pilling a cat, some cats, I have a cat, I could not pill at all. It is actually easier because you don't have to open a mouth, you don't have to put anything down there. It's a tiny little small 25 gauge needle. We just lift up the, the you know, kind of in the back behind the head and just put it, pop it in and just inject a tiny little amount. Cats really do better, and so do dogs, actually, on twice a day insulin. We used to feed them regimen, and now we kind of allow the cat to sort of eat the way it is, but we're going toward more high protein, less carbohydrate diets, so kind of the kitten type. Mm -hmm. Cats love that kind of stuff, and we're doing more canned food because there's so much more water. And so making sure so they're for hydrated. the cats that'll accept it, the idea is to put them on more moist food to increase the protein, decrease the carbs, and whatever diet the veterinarian chooses, and right. at the same time get that weight down. Now, if you can do all that, and you can with a lot of cats, and you alluded to this earlier, the exciting news is that some cats actually, I don't know that you'd call it a cure, but go into diabetic remission. They're better. And if we catch it early, that's the key, because the longer they have a high blood sugar, the more resistant they get to insulin. So if we catch it early, start them on insulin in a diet, then we have a good chance in a few months, and it's tricky, it's trial and error. Some, some cats don't go off insulin long term, that we can actually get them off insulin or at least find a dose of insulin that'll work for them. Now, sometimes, here's the tricky part, that insulin doesn't adjust as well as the owner would like. I mean, the glucose curve is all over the map, or the goal is to, as we talked about, get them off, period, so they're better. Might, in some cases, it be better to see a specialist. Yeah, I talked about ideally when it's simple, we pick a dose, need to change it slightly, and then 
they don't need it long term. But the truth is it's trial and error. We start them on a dose and then we need to do some glucose curves. Um, we have a, um, a diagnostic test called a fructosamine. I'll look at glucose every couple of, over a couple of week period of time. And then we have to adjust it. And if, if it turns out that within a couple of months, say that the glucose is going too low, too high, the animal isn't doing well, cat's losing weight, that that's when an internal medicine specialist who has a little bit more expertise, has treated a lot of diabetics, can say, hey, let's look at this. Maybe there's another disease going on. We diagnose it by high blood sugar and glucose in the urine, but part of that is a whole general panel to make sure there isn't an infection. Kidney disease, bladder infections, things like that are really important to look at. And the internist may look at some other problems, maybe do some ultrasound if the cat isn't regulated well, look at other problems, and then decide, are we on the right insulin? Is everything working? So if it's, if it's not working over, say, a couple of months period of time, it, it's not a bad idea for the veterinarian to suggest, hey, why don't we have an internal medicine specialist take a look, see what their opinion is, and then I will continue. You'll come back to me, and I'll continue to monitor the, the kitty cat. And the good news is, for diabetes, there is no death sentence here, and maybe you need that expert help in addition, but there is help available. You can learn more at acvim.org.